Good afternoon on today's Word for Life. Um, we're going to talk about righteous decrees, making righteous decrees. And so the first uh, place we're going to go today is Genesis chapter 12. We're going to talk about Abraham, the call of Abram. And so it says, Now the Lord said to Abram, Go forth from your country and from your relatives and from your father's house to the land which I swore to you or the land which I've shown you, he said, and I will make you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great, and so shall you shall be a blessing, and I will bless those who bless you. He said, and I will curse those who curse you, and in you all the families of the earth will be blessed. And that's Genesis 1 through 3, the call of Abram. And so when you look at that, your, uh, your life decisions, your obedience affects generations generations after you and so from genesis i want to go to romans 4 and it's very very important that we understand that our decrees our righteous decrees and the things that we do in life and the things we speak over our seed are very very important and we can speak life and we can speak death the choice is up to ours and we can decree and declare a thing and it will be established and so we're going to walk through some word here in Romans 4, 17 and 18. It says, as it is written, a father of many nations have I made you in the presence of him whom he believed, even God. He said, who gives life to the dead and calls into being that which does not exist. In hope against hope, he believed so that he might become a father of many nations according to that which he had spoken so shall your descendants be and that's Romans 4 17 and 18 and so righteous decrees God says he calls God gives life to the dead and calls into being that which does not exist and so we have this delegated authority from God as children of the kingdom and we're able to do righteous decrees we're able to call things back from the dead we're able to decree and establish some things in the earth and we're able to speak into our generations blessings instead of cursing and so we have that kind of um power and authority in job 22 28 and you know this what i've been quoting here it says you will also decree a thing and it will be established for you and light will shine on your ways and so praise God, right? And so when we look at Abraham's faith here, there is a formula here that we can follow so our decrees are righteous. And the first thing is Abraham had the word of God. And so God called him in Genesis. He had the word of God about his descendants. He had the word of God, and the word of God fueled his faith to be able to go to places and sojourn and be able to uh, be able to have his promised child, all of those things. So when you get the word of God, you hold on to that. The second thing is Abraham believed God's word. He didn't just hear the word. He didn't just read it out of, you know, what we would say we read a scripture out of the Bible. But we, we believe God's word because God's word is truth. And so that is very important. He heard the word. He believed the word because uh, faith is action. So Abraham moved. Whenever God spoke, he moved and he sojourned. He did all the things that God commanded him. And what I love about reading about the patriarchs is that they were all imperfect vessels, but nonetheless, they operated in faith and it pleased God and they had a heart for God. And the third thing is, it says that Abraham, if you read that in Romans 4, for sake of time, you can go back and read those chapters, but Abraham considered not the contradictory circumstances of his body and Sarah's body. And so that means that even though he contemplated, he, he, he obviously understood that his, the, the bodies weren't working, right? That he was past age and all of those things, but that was in the realm of reason and human logic. So if I'm going to do righteous decrees, these are righteous decrees. These decrees, these declarations, this, these words of faith come out of another realm. They're not coming out of my soul they're not coming out of a place of r human logic and reasoning. They're coming out of a place of a supernatural in the supernatural realm of faith. 
And so even though he saw it, he recognized that he did not let it stop him. Amen. He did not. And so in the fourth thing that Abraham did, Abraham gave praise to God. How did he do that? With his mouth. He blessed God. He gave praise to God. Praise seals the deal when you're doing righteous decrees and all of that. And so he believed he, he didn't consider his own deadness. He didn't consider his human weakness. You know, and we do that a lot of times as children of the kingdom even. You know, sometimes we look at our natural circumstances. We look at our own ability. We look at these things, and instead of us making righteous decrees and instead of us speaking life and, and speaking what God is saying, we begin to gravitate over and we speak contrary. We, we begin to be negative. We speak in fear. We speak in doubt and all of those things, and that will cancel out our righteous decrees. And so... All of these things are things to consider. Uh, Jeremiah 23, 29, it says, Is not my word like fire, declares the Lord, and like a hammer which shatters a rock? Praise God, right? And so that's, that's powerful right there, that God's word is fire and God's word is hammer. And so it's not just speaking it and just saying it, but it comes that comes out of another realm. He's talking about his prophets making decrees and saying and speaking things. And, and we have the Holy Spirit in us, and we have the power of God within us, the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead, and we are able to do these things. Our words of can come out like fire, like a hammer. The greatest uh, weapon that you have as a child of God is your mouth. The sword of the Lord that comes forth out of your mouth, out of your faith, out of your spirit man. Amen. And so you need to do that today. You need to um, petition the Lord. You need to get a clear cut vision on some things. Things in your life right now may not look good. There might be situations in your body, uh, in your finances, whatever it is. There could be things going on that don't look too good, but, but we're going to show you how to get a righteous decree to come out of your mouth concerning it to change some things. And that's also speaking, and we don't have time to go into it, but that's a governmental term of authority there. And so Isaiah 55, 10, let's go there. It says, for as the rain, he said, and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there without watering the earth, he said, and making it bear and sprout and furnishing seed to the sower and bread to the eater. He said, so will my word be which goes forth from my mouth. It will not return to me empty without accomplishing what I desire and without succeeding in the matter of which I sent it. Isaiah 55, 10 and 11. That's some power, isn't it? Just like what I read in Jeremiah. That's a confident declaration there. God is saying, look, it will not return to me void, but it will accomplish that which I sent it. Do you believe that when you speak the word of God? Do you, be, do you believe that when you decree and declare a thing to get it established? Do you believe that you're going to see what you say? And so there's, there's three things here that I'm going to give you today. First thing you do is you repent of any fear, doubt, or unbelief, negative, corrupt communication. Get rid of offenses. Get rid of uh, negativity. Stop looking at your natural circumstances. And so you have to think like God. Number one, you think like God. You have to get the word of the Lord concerning your situation, concerning your circumstances right now. Not in the natural what it looks like. And it could be prodigal children. It could be finances. It could be health issues. Uh, many things going on right now. And so you have to get think like God concerning that. How did Jesus think? How did Jesus speak, right? And so when Jesus spoke a thing, he knew it was going to happen. He, he, did, he did not question. He did not worry. He did not wonder. He, he pulled out. He was one with his father. And everything he spoke, he spoke by faith, and he saw it come to pass. So we have to think like God. You say, well, I don't think I can do that. If you have God's spirit, you can think like your father because you have his spirit. And so cancel that out with the blood of Jesus. And number two, 
You need to meditate on the word that you just got concerning your circumstance. So what am I saying? I'm saying you're building faith in the word that God gave you. So sometimes you find Christians, when they get a word real quick, they begin to try and say it or try and speak it and do it, but they haven't developed, they haven't got some integrity with it yet. And so you meditate on the word, you, you get in it, you allow that word, uh, you allow that word to be built up, right? You allow it to be built up. You continue to, to pack it down. You continue to bring it up. It's kind of like um, when you meditate or you mutter on the word. It's like uh, the word of God comes back up and you, you begin to speak it. You begin to think it. You're saying it. You're meditating on it. All of those things. And what are you doing? You're building faith in the word that God gave you concerning your finances, concerning your health, concerning many, many things. And so so that's very, very important that you do this part right here. You don't just throw it out real quick. You're going you're gonna to allow faith to build in that word. And you might have to um, get two or three witnesses. What does that mean? Uh, two or three witnesses, let every, every fact be established, right? You, you're going to get two or three scriptures and whatever it is that you need. And you're going to meditate. You're going to think about it. You're going to allow it to develop and grow in your spirit, man. And, if, and you're going to see when you're doing that and you're just speaking it as you're going around your house. You're just meditating on it. Faith is building, and you're going to know when it's time. And then number three, you're going to speak and declare that word with authority. That's the power. God has given every believer authority to operate in faith. You don't have to ask permission to operate in faith. You don't have to ask permission to decree and declare the word of God as truth. And so you need to you need to hear that today. You need to make some righteous decrees over the things that's going on in your life that you don't like. You need to begin to do that. You need to begin to take this, get the word on it, meditate on the word, and then rise up in this authority that God has given you in the earth and decree a thing and watch it be established. And you may have to do this daily. You may have to do this a while, and that doesn't mean you don't have faith. I teach you pray, and you decree, you declare until you see the results. And so, Father, right now, I just thank you for those that are watching. And Father God, I just release this word into their spirit right now. Father, we seal it in the blood of Jesus. Lord God, I thank you, Father, that out of their mouth that there is a shift today. Father, that there will be some righteous decrees over their families, over their nation. Hello, we need that, right? Over our president, Father, over our situation, our finances, over our health, Father God, that we would meditate on the word of truth like never before. We would mutter, we'd bring it up, we would chew it, we would think about it, we would know that the word is living and alive and it's active and it's sharper than any two-edged swords and it pierces and it divides and cuts asunder it is like a hammer it is like fire and so father i release that into your people that the spirit of faith would rise up inside of them today father god and there would be a shift in what they're speaking over their problems and their circumstances father god that they would call those things that are not as though they were and we thank you for that right now for the encouragement and the power of god being released released into them today in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.